I was born in El Paso, but I grew up in Ciudad Juarez. And one thing that you will notice is I'm not familiar with technology or with public speaking. <laughs> so, uh, there we go. Uh, what I wanted to share with you is the work that I've been doing recently with children. Having been born in El Paso and raised in Juarez, I was hurt, like most of you probably were, between 2008 and 2011, by having our wonderful city, where I personally grew up, in a safe and idyllic childhood, to become the murder capital of the world. It hurt in personal ways by all of us having experience. I do not know anybody who was not personally touched by an act of violence. But we were also hurt, but what we were seeing was the image that our city was being generating across the world. Sorry. I'm so sorry. It's the other way. Forward, always forward. <laughs> okay. Um, so we were looking at awful headlines that were showing how people in Juarez were being affected, adults as well as children. But one of the most saddening things for me was to look at what the long term effect might be if nothing was being done. So, along with uh, three women, a supervisor from the Department of Education and two other executive directors of community organization. We decided that, like the adults were getting organized to change and bring back lawfulness, children needed to be a part of this dialogue and this discourse. So we decided to give children a voice, children between the ages of 10 and 13 years of age. But how to go about doing this? Um, what I proposed to th our partners was that we take a model that I had developed that would be able to replicate the resources that we had m many times over. Uh, we were supported by some wonderful, generous people, but the monies were limited, so we needed to be come up with an idea that would get us as much bang for the buck as possible. So this model that I had worked with went we beyond the peer-to-peer. -peer. It made people who received the message responsible for replicating that message and moving the idea forward. So if it was working with adults, why not make it work with children? So we went to five schools as a pilot and worked with 36 classes of children in the fifth and sixth grade. From that, those classes, we selected a choice number of children between eight and 10, and we trained those kids to become the instructors. And then they, in turn, trained a second wave of children, and then, consequently, those children took the message to the community and educated another wave of children. So what were the messages that the children were replicating. Well, we realized that the teachers were doing a good job teaching civics and ethics in the classroom in the formal sense, with formal messages, but that we needed to have the opportunity to make those messages more age appropriate in order for the children to engage in dialogue. A dialogue that would be, uh, give them an opportunity for critical discussion, as well as to begin to internalize those principles and values. So some of the, the, what you can see here in the red are the formal lessons, the formal titles that are part of the curricula. But how do you transform abstract ideas like tolerance and democracy for a 10-year-old? So we thought of you know, simple things like we all count. We are all 
valuable, and we all have a voice. And consequently, how do you create a culture of lawfulness? By having every citizen use their powerful voice for change. So these are the, the messages that we turn into storybooks for children that would be ideal tools that the children could use to teach each other. Oops. Okay. Now, each storybook includes a, a storyline, and in this first one, we were trying to teach the children about their rights, including the UN Universal Rights of Children, and uh, which by the way, the United States is the only country in the world that has not ratified. But um, sitting, putting that aside, the children learned through this uh, booklet how to interact with the website and how to interact with each other and exchange information about what was on the website. Uh, there was also games. In each of the storybooks, there are games, uh, and I want to play one with you. Can anybody complete the sentence at the bottom? It would be number two across. Every child must have time to dance, sing, write. That is time to okay. play. It's a very simple, very simple write, but children who are living in a situation of narco war or warfare do not have that right in practice. So we were taking these tools and having them, more than the concepts, practice how to exchange those ideas. There was a lot of role modeling, a lot of discussion, and then a lot of practice. Uh, the bottom two photographs, you see the kids already in the second and third wave doing instruction, in the, first in the school setting and the second picture in the community. We also gave them thousands and thousands and thousands of stickers that they could put in the refrigerator, that they could put in their books, that they could stamp everything that they could saw with messages. This is a rough translation uh, of one of them. Uh, but you see, we were trying to use uh, colloquial expressions to get a message and to, re to reinforce, or very simple things like, I am valuable, that the kids could put on their books. We brought the parents to make sure that the parents understood what we were doing and that we would have additional allies in when the child wanted to put something on the refrigerator or when the child wanted to talk to them or to their siblings, that they understood what was going on. We also engaged in dialogue with the teachers in order for us to come to an understanding that we were uh, using the same messages, that we were working in tandem, and that we needed to learn from one another the best ways of teaching these messages to children. The professors or the teachers were helping us also to collect coupons from the children in order for us to keep a tally as to how many children we were able actually to reach, because otherwise, you know, how would we know if we did a good job? So, uh, we did a fantastic job. Um, we trained 193 children. The second wave reached 819. The third wave reached 2,251. So by investing our time in working with 193 children, we reached over 3,000. That's a wonderful return on one's investment. Uh, we also uh, did a survey among the kill children and uh, 500 of them, and we were realizing that they were actually internalizing what we were teaching them. Almost every child was able to repeat at least two of the rights, universal rights of children, and two of the responsibilities. But to me, uh, the most important thing that occurred is that we were changing and transforming the lives of these children. In one of the sessions, I was told of a child 
who when sharing what he wanted to do with his life was that he wanted to be engaged as a killer by one of the gangs. And to me, there was no more tragic consequence of the violence than to see a child wishing to have that be his or her future. So what we are building now is a society that supports each other, children that know that they can count on one another. They have common values that would lead them to be living in a culture of lawfulness. And my dream for the future is to have more voices of children in Ciudad Juarez, in the state of Chihuahua, in Mexico, and in the world. Thank you.